it seems like men are hurting. Yeah. Most likely to deal with mental illness, most likely to self-delete. You got to have a vice or you got to have a Lord. Yeah. I got a 2021 and a 2023, you know, Escalade. And um, my 2023, the engine blew with 10,000 miles on it. It's crazy. Hmm. But I never thought to call Porsche. I never thought to call Nissan. I took the Cadillac back to Cadillac. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, y'all got to fix this. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. Why do I say that? I feel like when something is wrong, you got to take it back to the creator. Mm. You just got to take it back to the manufacturer. Like yeah. whoever built it, you got to take yeah. it back and go, it's broke. What do you say to the Christians and the people who already have faith, but maybe because of how they were raised, maybe because of their zip code, maybe because of whatever, they're struggling with that other side, that, that abundant life side that we're talking yeah. about, right? The Matthew 25 parable of the talent yeah. side. Unfortunately, you can listen to God and entertain the enemy. Like the enemy mm. doesn't mind you. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you want to spend some time with God? You spend some time with me. Like you do God during the week. You can do me on the weekend. God says you must serve me with your whole heart, mm. your whole mind, your whole soul. You speak with a certain confidence yeah. and certainty yeah. that's only developed in hindsight. Yeah. You know that God yeah. is faithful. You know that God yeah. is good because you've repeatedly seen him. Yeah. So there's no other way to speak about it but with a confidence. I'm 100% confident that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And anything that happens is what God's plan, period. Bruce Lawn. All right, this is the time. Many of you guys have been waiting for. I've been waiting for. We have the man. The myth, the myth, the legend, the pastor, the number one motivational speaker in the world, Eric Thomas. What's up, Doctor Eric Thomas? Uh, Et to you, fam. Okay. Et to you. Yeah, I only use that in our school settings. Okay. Yeah, man, this is a this is a privilege. Thank you so much for doing. Thanks this. for having me, man. I bumped into you at the airport. Yes. And it ha it was all happenstance. Yeah. I was uh, going to Israel. Absolutely. It was super duper early in the morning. Yeah. And uh, I saw you checking in. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to bug this brother right now, man. And uh, somehow swooped back around, saw you. And you have this ability, and I saw you do it with a couple of people where people met you, and I did. Mm -hmm. And, and, and in, in this social media climate, people know you, you don't know them, right? And you have this ability of making people feel so welcome and warm to be like, as, as if you already know them. Oh, no question. And, I mean, yeah, let's think about it. I wouldn't be number one, you know, without the people who actually listened to my stuff, you know, took a liking and then spread it. I mean, I think, man, I've never had a PR firm. I've never had a marketing firm, mm -hmm. you know. So in essence, each individual is like my PR person, my marketing person. Yeah. So I'm getting to meet my PR person for the first time. I'm getting to meet my marketer for the first yeah. time. I'm getting to meet the people that, you know, consume my content and used it not only in their own personal life. So yeah, for me, man, it's like, man, what an opportunity to, you know, meet you guys. So yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm as excited probably as you guys are. Yeah. And um, six o'clock. I think it was. I think we had a six o'clock. It was early, like, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was sleepy. You know what I'm saying that's the benefit though of waking up early in the morning and yeah. grinding for all these yep. years. Yep. That you know by six I'm ready to I'm ready to take on the day. Yeah. Well, you've been at this for a while, and one of the yeah. things I appreciate about you is this 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 overlap of faith. And the practical side of yeah. of, of motivation, mindset, yeah. mentality. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know who you are, you're born in Chicago, yeah. raised in Detroit. You had a yeah. pretty rough upbringing. You were homeless, yeah. and uh, you met a met a pastor, and who believed in you. Absolutely. Talk about that and the importance yeah. of like someone believing in in you and 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 speaking life over you before there was probably much. Or this version of ET was oh, even here. Yeah, no, this version is. You know what I'm, saying? I'm I'm shocked at this version. You know what I'm saying <laughs> what you know God is able to do, but I do I do believe that you know we're able to hear a little clearer. You know I don't know that that was the first time God had ever given me that message. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do know that was the first time I was in a position to hear it as mm -hmm. clear as I heard it before. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much either on the verge of being officially a high school dropout, you know, but sleeping in abandoned buildings, you know, eating, you know, where I could. And, you know, I was just at a very dark space in my life, confused, no clarity. Yeah. And uh, this pastor spoke, you know, it's really weird, man. He, you know, he spoke into my future, meaning who I was going to be mm. in my present, you know? And I think the cool thing about it was not just the words, mm -hmm. 
but the environment, like, you know, some people that can speak to you and there's other people that can speak to you and then put you in an environment where they can speak to you regularly, mm. you know? And so him being a pastor, it was like, hey, you need to keep coming to this church. You need to stay in this community. Mm -hmm. You need to stay around these people. You know, you need to get this information. So for me, it was like, yep, great word. But then I was getting words every week from him. I was getting the choir singing. I was in an environment of loving people, caring mm -hmm. people, you know? So, but definitely, you know, he didn't say to me my reality, which a lot of people was like, you know, you're going to be just like, you know, and you're not going to do this and mm -hmm. this is not possible. And mm -hmm. that, you know, and I, I, I guess they were speaking reality, mm -hmm. but he didn't speak current reality. Mm. He spoke future reality. Prophetic reality. Yeah, almost. no question. Yeah. And I, um, I think the most important part about it was for some reason, I believed him. <laughs> like I believed in this person that he thought could be. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, not maybe at the actual moment, yep. but moments I really put myself in a position where I was like, okay, if you believe him, then what's next? Like whatever he tells you to do, do, yep. you know? And so, you know, at one point it was come to church regularly. At yep. another point it was, you need to go get your GED. At yep. another point was, you need to go to Oakwood College. At mm -hmm. another point, you need to literally get on the bus, you know, and go, mm -hmm. you know? And man, I, I don't talk about this a lot. I don't know chronologically I don't I, I guess it makes sense but I, I I just never shared it but my freshman year in college he literally man God is so divine you know this was a new city a new state I was in Huntsville Alabama I'd never been to Alabama before I had heard a lot about Alabama and a lot of it wasn't good you know for people of color you know all I had really heard about was the KKK um, and so I was a little nervous to go but the crazy part about it was the first year I was there he actually was invited to come to the university to do a week of prayer. Mm. So it was like, not only was the person who believed in me telling me that I need to go to this university, mm. but he was there my freshman year. Mm. So almost like a blanket. Yeah. And I got an opportunity to spend that week with him getting reassured that, yo, this was the best decision. You're doing the right thing. Stick in there. Yeah. Stay in there. It was a new culture. Yeah. It was kind of new. But yeah, Pastor Willis definitely spoke life. Well, he spoke he spoke God's reality Come on. you know into my life. That's so good. Yeah. Um did you believe it all the way initially or or was there like okay it, it's a, it was a mustard seed. And, yeah. and I ask you this because yeah. I I grew up San Diego father wasn't in my yeah. life only only child with my mom mm. and there was a, a lady in our apartment building that got saved. She was the manager and she got radically saved. She went to prison came back completely just and she started converting the whole complex except mm. me and my family mm. right but but back then the next door neighbor charles got saved and he started saying these things i mean mm. you're gonna do great things for the lord someday mm. you're gonna do things for jesus mm. you're gonna make the name and i was like mm. listen i'm an atheist i got yeah. church hurt yeah. dad's not around yeah. there's a god he don't love me mm -hmm. and he was speaking things but i didn't believe it at the time mm -hmm. but i guess in hindsight mm -hmm. there was those little mustard seeds so yeah. so in your situation were you like 100 percent in all the way, or was it like these mustard seeds of faith that over time took root yeah. and then blossomed? You know, I don't think it was either or. I think it was both hands. Okay. Like the relationship part, I was totally believing that that was about to work out okay. like perfectly. Like me and Jesus about to be homies. Yeah. Like I've really, you know, I went to a religious camp when I was eight. Mm -hmm. So I was super into, you know, I'm literally about to go to an environment that, is going to support what I believe. Yeah, You know, it's like one thing if you go to, and again, I don't say this to be disrespectful, you know, and some people be like, well, I play Duke football. Like, mm -hmm. it's great. Okay. Yeah. But historically, for those of us who are on the outside looking in, Duke is seen to us more as a basketball sure. place. Like, yo, you go to Duke yeah. and you playing basketball, it's mm -hmm. like, ah, you going to Duke. North Carolina, it's mm -hmm. like basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to play football. I'm not saying that it's not a good program, but historically, we don't necessarily think football, Duke, football, North Carolina, mm -hmm. right? And so I went to a Christian school. So I was like, like, yo, this is the perfect, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, setup for somebody that believes in God. Like, yo, we got to go to chapel. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a part of you. Like, yeah. you got to you got to go to worship in the morning. You got to mm -hmm. go to chapel. We're taking religious courses. I was like, this finna be a this, breeze. This is in Alabama. Yeah, this is Alabama. Okay. I'm like, this finna be a breeze. Yeah, like, yeah. for my relationship now, in terms of the professional part, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. sure. Like, okay, does this mean I'm gonna be a pastor? Because I'm not really, like, I'm really not trying to do that. Like, I'm not necessarily 
ashamed of the gospel. I talk about God all the time, yeah. but I don't know if I want to really do the religious mm -hmm. thing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so so on one hand, yes, I was like, this is finna change my life. I was going with my girlfriend at the time, you know. Um, so yeah, I really felt like this is about to be a game change by change my life forever. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really clear on like my professional life. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really know if I'm going to be able to pull that off. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do well enough in school to really graduate. So that part, no. Mm. But the but the relationship part, oh, I ate it up. Yeah. I mean, you got to man, you gotta think. It's pastors from all over the world, the best of the best coming to speak. Yeah. Choirs, you know, whatever. So I love that part of it. But definitely the person I am today, professionally, I still can't believe yeah. that I made it this far. Yeah. Like, I'm the number one motivated speaker in the world. Like, that's weird to me. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like the Jordan, the Michael, you know, the Michael Jordan, the, you know, Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. the Larry Bird. Like I could have never imagined myself being considered the best to do something. Mm -hmm. But relationship wise, like healing people, you know, believing that I had power in Christ, the Holy Spirit was with me. Mm -hmm. Like I believe that part. Yeah. Yeah. How did the, <laughs> how did the career side start to flesh itself out? Because you're born 1970, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So I, you didn't really hit my radar until about, I think when I first started seeing you go, it was like when the internet, yeah. Web 2.0 exploded. Absolutely. I started, yeah. But you were already working with Absolutely. at-risk youth. You were yeah. already immersed yeah. in some ministry yeah. stuff. So walk us through some of that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I, that's one of the reasons why I think I blew up. I look at a lot of young people now and it's like, oh, it's not enough for you to really do God's will. It's like, you got to let other people know you're doing it. Come on. And I didn't have that. Like I didn't have that struggle. Yeah. It was no internet. So it was yeah. like nobody's supposed to know that you're doing it, but the people you touching and impacting. Right. You know, so for me, I had thought I was already not necessarily the best in the world, but I already thought it was dope that I got to do God's work. Yeah. And I got to do it with kids who were suffering with some of the same kind of stuff I was suffering with. So when I so when I got to college, we had a ministry called Bell Tower. And the reason why we started is because we felt like while we had a great opportunity to learn about God on campus. It was adults who was like adulting. Mm. And so, you know, sometimes, man, when you start getting into religion, it's just mixed with stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It's mixed with a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were like, yo, we just want to do peer to peer worship where it's like, no, it's nothing in it. It just, we going through the same stuff you're going through and we want to show you biblically how to get through that stuff that's good so when we first started i wasn't given the opportunity to speak because i really wasn't um you know i wasn't really academic like that you know mm -hmm. i was coming out of high school dropout you know i had never really had a skill set that i had honed anything like that you know so i was just passing out flyers knocking on doors just letting people know hey bro jesus is coming like mm -hmm. we bought to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like we we bought to get it in on campus yeah. every tuesday thursday and sunday right and in doing so you know, the two guys, Irv and Trey, who started with me, they were like Clem that are Clem on campus. So mm -hmm. Trey is in the music. You know, he's a chaplain for all kinds of stuff. Irv is the president of the law, whatever. You know, so they so their schedules kind of conflict sometimes mm -hmm. with the ministry. I don't got nothing else. I, I'm not <laughs> successful in nothing else. So I'm near 24-7. Like, yeah. I'm not missing no Bell Tower Ministries. Yeah. So I got the opportunity to host and then when they didn't show up or other speakers didn't show up, I got a chance to speak. Mm. And it was electric, man, because I really realized at a very young age that people like my brand of preaching mm -hmm. because it wasn't preachy. Mm. It was very practical, mm -hmm. you know, words that you can understand. It was like a fourth grade level. I use stories a lot, you know, really not comparing myself to Jesus, but him being, you know, my leader I use the parables mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that he used. I use narratives, stories, mm -hmm. and people love. I mean, when you think about when I blew up, it was the guru story. Yeah. Like it was a, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it was a parable, if you will, yeah. kid going to the war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't real. Right. You know, and so that's kind of where I started. Um, and then as I started doing it, I had a calling. Like I had this, I, I had this inspiration that, like, yo, E, you're not meant to do this just on campus and you're not meant to do it with people who grew up in the church. Mm. You know, you're you, like, you didn't grow up in the church. Like you're not meant to do this here. Yeah. And so our campus phenomenal mantra, it was enter to learn, depart to serve. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, go, that's the logo enter to learn, depart to serve. So our campus pastor, 
um, Elder Ward, he would make us go in the community to do community stuff every weekend. Like you go to church, mm -hmm. then you get on a bus, you get a packed lunch, sack lunch, and then you go out hospital, mm -hmm. projects, whatever. And while I was in the projects, I just felt at home. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, this is, you know, my grandma, my aunties, you know, like Chicago mm -hmm. uh, projects, Detroit projects. Like this is just the projects just felt at home. Yeah. And so I started like, okay, don't start typical with no Bible study. Like everybody not into that. But everybody has a need. And so I was like, yo, GED, I got a GED. I'm going to help these cats get a GED, send them off to college. And so in the beginning of school, I'm praying for them, reading scriptures mm -hmm. to them, reading motivational books. And they loving that more than they're loving the academic part of it. Mm. Like they're coming in, getting pumped up and they going through their go through, you know, this low income housing. So yeah. they got all kind of economic challenges, whatever. And so when I started doing that, like the city started interviewing me in the news and then they started the morning show and, yeah. you know, word got out and it's like, yo, E, we got this conference and this conference, yeah. you know? And so before you know it, man, I was, you know, I, is this before the viral clip? Yeah, this is this, way this before, before viral. This, this is like yeah. What year is this? Yeah, ninety one. Oh 92. wow. Okay, this is early. So you're yeah. young. You, you, oh yeah, I'm twenty one. Yeah, I'm twenty one, okay. twenty two. Okay. You know, after school, going on the projects. I'm out there every day, Monday through Friday, spending time sitting on the curb, mm. hooping with the kids. You know, bringing, uh, you know, lunches, whatever. Yeah. And so ninety one, ninety two. Like I'm in. I'm in the trenches, like yeah. doing it. So then we're doing revivals in in big cities, and so we go to big cities and we set up a tent for four weeks. And while we're setting up the tent in the daytime, we're in the projects with them. You know, we're bringing food. You know, we spending time with them, crafts, arts and crafts, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then at night we're doing a revival. Got you. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I I was in the trenches, and I, and so what happened was, you know, there were people who were like, "Man, E, you you're doing a phenomenal work," but the challenge is. You know, you got a four year degree, bro. And if you want to really do well in academia, you got to, you know, you're going to have to get out there, get out there, mm -hmm. you know. And so you got to go get another degree. You got to whatever. And I'm like, yeah. what? They're like, you got to get a master's degree. And so Michigan State was entertaining me, mm -hmm. you know, so I ended up going to Michigan State. And the program we started on campus that I had been doing and what we had been doing in the community, I just brought that to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. um, and so we would do it every uh, Monday. Thank mm -hmm. God it's Monday. Then we do our event in the evening. And... I don't know what happened, but a good friend just brought his camera and a mic to watch me do my thing. Bro, I, I tell people this all the time, and I'm not saying it to be cocky, but I probably did a hundred uh, guru stories before I did a guru story. It mm. just never was recorded. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we was using eight track and yeah. then we was using cassette tape yeah. and then CDs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, nobody really had. I mean, you look at, I walked in your studio, bro, phenomenal, by the way. Thank you. Bro, you got about four or five cameras around here. Like, bro, that you know how much a camera cost in mm -hmm. the 70s, oh, yeah. 80s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, like the average person couldn't afford yeah, yeah. to buy a camera. Yeah. You know, so uh, if, if, if you did it on a mic, that would be one thing. But even that was, the average person didn't walk around you know, with, with a roadcaster. Sure, sure, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So it's like, I did a bunch of stuff yep. that was never recorded or never yeah. seen or there was no platform once you did record it with a big old camera. Like, there was no Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just keep that uh, whatever VHS, whatever it is you have, you're just keeping that in the basement somewhere. Yeah. So social media really changed the game in that if you weren't in the room for the first time with Eric Thomas... You still had an opportunity to be in the room. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So that was the that was the only difference. Well, you, you're spending two decades basically yeah. in, on the front lines, yeah, front immersing line. yourself yeah. in. It sounds like a very practical yeah. meeting the needs yeah. of these communities Absolutely. with the spiritual evening yeah. revival component. Yeah. Yeah. And so then when people see you explode, and, and what year was it? Like 2012, 2011 ish. Yeah. So yeah. So so we start putting it out 2007, 2008, okay, just so on campus. Uh -huh. So it was kind of getting some leeway on campus. Yeah. And, you know, in that community, they're sending it to their friends. Sure. But, yeah, I'd say about 2009, 2010, okay. you got, like, Tyrese listening to it. Uh -huh. He's sending it out. You uh -huh. got uh, Reggie Bush sending uh -huh. it out. P. Diddy had called and was like, E, I'm checking out. So, you know, you had a group of people. There was one that this DJ called The Truth. He got it out. And I guess he must have had a large following. Mm -hmm. For those days, I mean, you think now I was telling somebody today, it's like, you guys, I feel sorry for y'all because it's like algorithms and it's sure. like you have to 
pay to boost. Mm -hmm. Like when I was coming out, Facebook needed me. Like they didn't have no content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So they was loving what I was, uh, you know, putting out there. But you know, you had these kind of DJs really talking about me and pushing it. So by 2009, it got leeway. 2010, it really picked up. And by 2012, like I was a household name. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least the story, sure. the guru story. The guru, I never forget yeah. The Rock had put it up, and somebody was like, yo, and I'm not saying The Rock was doing that, but yeah. somebody was like, that's E.T. quote. And, and so <laughs> it, it got to a point where it was like, it was recognizable that yeah. that, that guru story yep. and E.T. are synonymous. Even if yeah. you don't know who I am, yep. personally, you've heard the voice, mm -hmm. and you know that stuff, that thing was everywhere. Uh, again, I think people don't, today understand the decades of working in the quiet in the secret place and then being prepared to yeah, execute yeah. Do, do you think you won that experience but also you being a little older and this this is exploding when you're in your 30s yeah, um yeah. do you think that better equipped you to deal with everything that came after well i, I will say this um i think when you have an opportunity to do the work and just focus on the work, Yeah, it's easier. Like mm -hmm. when you got to focus on the work and then you got to focus on blowing up and being famous. Mm -hmm. You know, I was telling somebody the other day, man, it was weird. It's somebody that I love. We were having a conversation and they, they seemed like they weren't content. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, biblically you should be content, period. But like, sure. okay, let's talk about why you're not. Yeah. And they were talking about money. And I was like, ah, you got a lot of money. Like I, that can't be it. And I said, you know what? I said, wow, this is a different dynamic and I feel for you. I was like, yo, the real challenge is in this generation, it's not enough for you to make it. Like, it's not enough for you to financially be stable. You have to be famous, too. Wow. Like, people have to know that you're doing well. That's crazy. So it's not enough that you yeah. really are in a very good space. Yeah. Maybe mentally, emotionally, you got money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a good set of friends. You have a great community. Like, it's not enough. It's yeah. like, it's only enough if other people recognize that you the one. Interesting. You know? And so I was like, yo, that's a that's a... That's a struggle like that I didn't have. So so my motives were pure, not because I'm a pure human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But my motives was pure in that I didn't have to focus on what you thought about what I was doing. That's good. All I had to focus on was, yo, God wants me in this community. He wants me to help these kids get a GED. Yeah. So if this kid gets his GED or even if he stays out of prison or if she you know, has her child and the child is healthy and she gets her GED and go gets a job. Like, yo, that was the only pressure. Yeah. It wasn't, do I, okay, so I'm making a change, but I only have 100,000 followers. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm killing the game and God is yeah. pleased and everything yeah. is going great, but I don't have millions of followers. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah. I didn't, I didn't have that struggle. And I think because I was able to focus on what God wanted me to focus on, which is GED, getting people whole, mm -hmm. getting them to God, you know, I, yeah. I was good. I had one focus and not, you know, like today, many focuses. Yeah. Yeah. The, the pathway to greatness is through service. Yeah. And we think about the story with the disciples arguing who is going to be the greatest. And Jesus goes, whoever wants to be yeah. the greatest, go serve. Yeah. Go serve people. Yeah. And that's what you did. Yeah. 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 He said that the greatest among you shall be a servant. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, and I do. I Man, it's crazy that I'm considered, you know, one of the best that ever do it. Yeah because it's a testament to the word is true. Yeah, I, I, I put myself in the least. I, I had somebody say to me the other day, man, E, I couldn't believe we were at the Super Bowl. I took 41 kids to the Super Bowl, ate chaperone. And so, you know, we were there and the kid I was sitting next to um, was, you know, from Georgia. He was probably going to be considered one of the top drafts and whatever. So we sit next to each other. He got his agent there and he had some of his homies and they weren't in our section, but they wanted to sit with him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Hey, y'all sit there. I'm good. I'll go stand and watch the game because mm -hmm. I'm not even really here for the game. I'm here to give these kids this, sure. this experience. I just believe, you know, Jamal said that your level of exposure determines your level of success. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get these kids exposure. So I'm standing there. A lady walks by. I think she might be a little drunk, you know, so she's got chicken nuggets and fries, bunch of ketchup on it, and she drops, you know, her meal all mm -hmm. on the ground. And it was weird because it was like, I guess it wasn't a professional um, cleaner. Mm. I guess that's supposed to happen after the Super Bowl is over. Mm -hmm. They come in and they serve. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yo, bro, this is a concrete floor. Like if somebody slip and fall on mm -hmm. that ketchup, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. So there were people who had been greeting me who knew me. Oh, I've been watching your videos for whatever. And then I dashed 
and got paper towel and got the chicken up and, you know, I had to come back and wipe the floor up. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of ketchup. So ketchup first, then you come back after the ketchup and get that. Then you yeah. got to come back with a little water and get that so it's not sticky. And there were people like, yo, mm -hmm. bro. And then, you know, it's so funny. People who weren't helping start helping when they see me start to do it. Like, yo, you can't do that. <laughs> I was like, why can't I do that? You E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. And I was like, no, nah, before I was E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher, I was mopping floors. Yeah. And I was taking our trash. Yep, yep. And that's what got me here. Yep. So we got to keep doing. Yeah. Like being the number one motivational speaker didn't make me the number one motivational speaker in the world. Got you. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, that's a weird construct to people. It's like, what I am today didn't get me. Like, it's actually the bus boy at the Olive Garden. It was the, you know, uh, cashier and the cook at McDonald's. Like, mm. that was the guy that actually got me here. Mm. And if we stop being this person, mm -hmm. Like even on the cross, Jesus was still Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like he was still looking out for people. Yeah. Still you know praying what I'm for people. Yeah, you know cross. what I'm saying? He was yeah. still praying, he was still yeah. preaching, he was still concerned. Yeah. It wasn't like this moment stopped him from being Jesus. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, E, you gotta continue to serve. Serving got you here. Giving people your time and attention got you here. Yeah. Like that's what got you here. So stick with the fundamentals because the fundamentals are going to not only they got you here, yeah. but the fundamentals are gonna keep you here. That's so good. There's right now a time in our country that's very interesting where where it seems like men are hurting. Yeah. Um, most likely to deal with mental illness, most likely to self-delete. Uh there's seven million right now who are not uh working, able bodied, able yeah. to work, but just yeah. just checked yeah. out, right? Not yeah. counted in the unemployment rates. And in response to some of this you're seeing, I'm not sure how familiar you are with some of the red pill, manosphere, yeah. Yeah. alpha male yeah. stuff, yeah. right? Uh and you, you've always had a, a, a very practical but also masculine frame to what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. What do you make sense? How do you make sense of the of the landscape of one what men are dealing with on yeah. a practical level, which is just different, uh, graduating less likely from college than women, yeah. um, and and some of the stuff we're seeing from this red pill ideology in terms of it, it, be, it being unhelpful, in my opinion. Yeah. So for me, I, I look at Eric Thomas. When he was unproductive, I look at Eric Thomas when he was super productive, mm -hmm. you know, and the Eric Thomas that was unproductive, you know, did not have a healthy, consistent relationship with the Savior. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He, he was just, what did other people think about him? Mm -hmm. You know, he was caught up on, you know, Detroit and what everybody in Detroit was doing. Like, it, just my identity was like crazy. Mm -hmm. The Eric Thomas that gave his life to Christ is the Eric Thomas that's like super clarity, mm -hmm. you know, super relying on the word and the spirit, mm -hmm. you know. I find it funny, bro, like, you know, people questioning and people having a challenge with, um, you know, Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I'm whatever religion, whatever, I'm not on that. I'm just saying, though, like, yo, bro, I'm from North America. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I was taught in school. We was praying in school when I was growing up, mm -hmm. you know, in God we trust, God bless America, mm -hmm. you know, but then you get to a point where especially in this generation, where it's like almost like, is that okay to be a, it's like, bro, this is where I was raised. This is mm -hmm. what I was taught to do. Like I was given a Bible at a young age. It was churches on every corner, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in Detroit, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, the embracing of God mm. has revolutionized and transformed my life. Mm -hmm. Bro, we ain't no religion. I'm telling you my life. Like I've become a better man. Mm -hmm. And as a better man, I became a better husband, a better father, a better son. Yeah. You know, my mom and my dad are living in the house I bought next door to me in Michigan. Like, you know, my parents, like I, I ran away from home. I was cussing my parents out and I don't even cuss. Mm -hmm. I was telling my father, I'm gonna take your life. It was like before God, bro, I was just, I didn't know what was going on. I was following people. I was worried about people. And to make it practical, um, and I don't say this to disrespect Cadillac, you know, unfortunately it happened, uh, but I bought a brand new, I got a 2021 and a 2023, you know, Escalade and um, my 2023, the engine blew with 10,000 miles on it. It's crazy. Hmm. But I never thought to call Porsche. I never thought to call Nissan. I took the Cadillac back to Cadillac. Mm -hmm. It was like, yo, y'all got to fix this. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong, you know, and they gave it back to me two weeks later, right? Gave me a loaner, gave it back to me. Why do I say that? I feel like when something is wrong, you got to take it back to the creator. Mm. You just got to take it back to the manufacturer. Like yeah. whoever built it, you got to take yeah. it back and go, it's broke. And so I personally feel like, you know, the removal of a relationship with God is the reason why we're having a bunch of challenges because now it's like 
Bro, it's real. I, I, I couldn't imagine. But for my children, yo, you got to go on the internet to see who you are? Yeah. Like, you got to go on the internet to compare yourself with another person to figure out if you know that, bro, that's not, that, that that's not to me. That's not what I want to do. Yeah. I, do I look at the internet? Absolutely. Am I on the internet? Absolutely. Do I read and research so I can help this generation? Absolutely. But I'm not going to the internet for my cues. I'm going to prayer. Mm. I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm going to the father. Yeah. So I just feel like when you, you got to go to something. Yeah. So if you ain't going to God, you got to go to either narcotics you got to go to alcohol. Like, you got to go to something. You got to go to other humans. Like, mm -hmm. you got to go to something. Like, no man is an island. So, you're not going to go through your go-through in isolation. Like, you got to you gotta have a vice or you got to have a Lord. Yeah. And, you know, for me, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Come on. I shall not want. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't have to have, I don't have to go to this, go to this, go to this. So, I just think a lot of what we're seeing right now, you know, and I know people will debate me, but I think a lot of it is, not having a relationship with the creator. And when you have a relationship with the creator, again, we're not just talking about religion. We're talking about he's going to specifically say, Eric, these are the gifts that I gave you. Mm -hmm. This is how I want you to use these gifts. Mm -hmm. This is how I want you to be a blessing to the earth while you're on there. Yeah. And I just feel like if we would, if we would um, bring, you know, the creator back into the conversation, I, I just personally think uh, some of the stuff that we're seeing and to the level that we're seeing it, I think it'll go away because people will be moving in purpose and not in popularity. That's good. That's good. What do you say to the Christians and the people who already have faith, but maybe because of how they were raised, maybe because of their zip code, maybe because of whatever, they're struggling with that other side, that, that abundant life side that we're talking yeah. about, right? The Matthew 25 parable of the talent yeah. side. How do, you, how do you relate to those people? Maybe it's the ideology they have. Maybe yeah. it's just their experience is what it is. And where would you say like the, like the root of that theological dilemma that they're struggling with is? Yeah, I, I'd say because it's, you, you know, <laughs> I hope my mom don't get upset, right? But uh, mom is um, just turned 71 and uh, mom worked for Ford for 30 years. And so mom retired, but she still got that juice. Mm -hmm. Mom ready to move. And so mom's looking for what's next for her. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I told my mom just this yesterday, I was like, mom, I just found out, you know, you signed up for this program, which I'm a part of. And then you talk to this person and you talk to that person. I was like, yo, mom, that's the absolute wrong thing to do. And she's like, what are you saying? Like, son, I'm trying to figure out my purpose. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, mom, but you can't, act, you can't have three, four cooks in the kitchen and you getting a <laughs> recipe from all three or four, mom, yes. like, <laughs> like ma if you're gonna do macaroni and cheese like pick one person and go with that sure. one but if you take a little bit of this little bit like ma it's, it's gonna mess everything up like you have to be singleness of fo focus mm. and so i think one of the challenges with a lot of christians is that they're the, uh, the a majority of what god teaches us we embrace yeah but then we start embracing what the culture teaches us mm. or what the zip code teaches like mm -hmm. there's a philosophical belief in our culture or in our community. Yeah. And so it's like, for me, it was like entrepreneurship is a cuss word. Mm. And I'm like, yo, mom, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an entrepreneur. I'm trying to do what God called me to do. Mm -hmm. And God told me, I don't want you to work anymore for an institution. Like I need you to freely come and do this podcast. If I need you to do it, mm -hmm. I need you to roll up to the school. If I need you to roll, mm -hmm. like I, I want to be your boss, son. So for me, he told me, I need you to be an entrepreneur. That was a curse word to my mom. Like, how you going to eat? How you going to take care? And so I feel like what's going wrong with some people is like, unfortunately, you can listen to God and entertain the enemy. Like, the enemy mm. doesn't mind you. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you want to spend some time with God? You spend some time with me. Like, you can do God during the mm -hmm. week. You can do me on the weekend. God says you must serve me with your whole heart, mm -hmm. your whole mind, your whole soul. Like, mm -hmm. he's not interested in a part-time relationship. He's like yeah. full of nothing. And so for me, what I had to do was go, Yo, if I'm going to do God, I got to do all of God. Mm. I got to do Genesis through Revelation. Like, yeah. I can't pick and choose. Yeah. And so there's a part of the Bible that says, I need to walk in abundance. Now, I'm not comfortable with that part. Mm -hmm. Historically, why? I grew up in middle-class America. Mm -hmm. Like, you looked at money in a certain way. It's like, it's, you, we were actually taught, yo, rich people don't yep. go to heaven. Yep. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what we were taught. Yeah. In essence, yeah. in the church, yep. rich people don't go to heaven. But as I read the Bible, I was like, hold up, Moses is rich. <laughs> yeah. Hold up, Joseph is yeah. paid. Yeah. Hold up, no, hold up, mm -hmm. Paul, th these people are economically well off. Yeah. Joseph got bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, this is a contrast. And so God was like, no, no, no. You can't follow me and then follow your culture. Mm. Like, you got to follow me. And so I realized, yo, I got to be a billionaire. Like, yo, I never realized it before, but I was called to be a billionaire. Why? 
You know how much it takes kids to go to the Super Bowl? Like Super Bowl tickets is five thousand eight hundred dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. You know how much it costs to fly kids from the Midwest to Dubai? Yeah. Like Dubai costs. The Atlantis costs. You know what I'm saying? Like the food in Dubai costs. Like the Super Bowl food costs. To put kids in the Airbnb just during the day or to take them to um, Dave and Buster's to put them on a party bus. Like, yo, nobody's giving this. Nobody's giving tickets away free. Like, oh, we love you, ET. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give you free Super Bowl tickets. No, Super Bowl tickets cost. Mm-hmm. So God was like, I send kids to college. I, I buy kids computers. I help kids study abroad. That costs money. Yeah. So no, I probably didn't need the abundance just for myself. Yeah, that's good. But yes, to do God's work, I need the abundance. Yeah. So some people six figures, you're going to need to make mid, high six figures. Some people seven figures, some people eight, not whatever. It, Bro, we built a church. Like, the greatest thing I've ever done in my life is that because of the work that we do, we actually built an edifice for the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, that nobody gave, we had to buy the land. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a medical facility before, mm-hmm. 16 acres, two buildings. We had to purchase it. We had to gut it out. Mm-hmm. Nobody said, we're going to drywall for free. Mm-hmm. We're going to lay floors for free. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you free electricity. Mm-hmm. We know the work that God is doing. Yeah. You know what? This LED screen is going to be, all the microphones, we toss, get, everything is given. No, yeah. we had to pay for it, but yeah. God gave us a gift and he said, in your gift shall make room for yeah. you. Yeah. You know, so... I believe you cannot listen to God and listen to your mama. That's good. You cannot listen to God and listen to your daddy. Yeah. How, how would you distinguish what you're describing, which sounds like biblical mm-hmm. wisdom? Mm-hmm. You, you're talking Proverbs. Mm-hmm. You're talking Absolutely. parable of the talents. And the perversion of that in some circles with the prosperity gospel. Well, like, I, what is that I, I would, distinguishment? I would separate it because one, like anything biblical, like everything comes from the word. Yeah. Satan has not made up anything. Yep. Our enemy is not a creator of anything. He, he, is, he, he is a counterfeit. Mm-hmm. So for everything God says in the word, it's a counterfeit for yeah, it. That's good. For me, the counterfeit is you're talking about abundance for self. Mm. You're talking about abundance for you and your family. Yeah. You're not talking about abundance for the kingdom. Like this, it doesn't belong to me. Yeah. So if God decides to put a billion dollars in my bank account, he's not saying, hey, Eric, I'm giving you a billion dollars. You can do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. Yeah. He's just saying, I can trust you. Yeah. To give you the billion without going to buy something that I didn't tell you to buy. Come on. Or do something I didn't tell you to do. So it's still my billion. It does not belong to you. Yeah. But I'm going to allow you to steward this billion for my kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think that's the difference. It's like I see people all the time. It's like, bro, is it about the kingdom or you? Mm. Like, you know, you, you got a lot of videos up. Are those videos, you know, some of that seems like it's about self glorification and mm. not kingdom glorification. So as long as we're going to keep a kingdom, you know what I'm saying? We're good to go. You know, somebody said to me, they like, oh, bro, I can't believe it. You walking around here without, you know, security or, or an entourage. You pulled, like, you pulled up by yourself today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, said, I, I said, here's the deal. For me, God is saying, I am your protector. Come on. I'm going to tell you where to go, where not to go. I'm going to protect you. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would not be good stewardship to pay somebody six people, six figures to follow me around. Mm-hmm. At this season, God is not telling me that in the airport. My wife was like, yo, we got special privileges. Like we could get off the plane. They could put us in the car and mm-hmm. get our luggage and take us. Why do you walk through the airport? I said, because right now God is telling me to steward my celebrity by being in the airport mm. because they're going to be people that I meet in the airport is going to be able to say, man, God use you. They're going to be people I need to pray with yeah. in the airport. They're going to be connections that I make. Whatever. If I if I don't ever go in the airport, I'm going to miss some assignments. Yes. So is it more convenient for me yeah. to not go through the normal TSA and walk through the airport? Yeah. Absolutely. For me, it's less of a convenience. But for God's work, yeah. it's more of a convenience. Like, I need you in the airport right now. I yeah. need – I uh, saw a father the other day. I went and spoke at a church. Uh, in Houston, bro, it was two hundred. It only fit two hundred fifty people, mm-hmm. and I don't think had I not put up on the Instagram that I was gonna be there, la- like an hour or two before, I don't know if all two hundred fifty seats would have been taken. Mm-hmm. I was at a two hundred fifty with no security, mm-hmm. with no why? Because that's where God told me to be. Yeah, He didn't tell me to be, and I got homies that have bigger churches in Houston, but mm-hmm. He was like, I need you to be at the two fifty because there's some people. In that neighborhood with that zip code that need to touch you. Mm. I had a father, man, come up to me, about six, six, three hundred pounds, 
As soon as he saw me, he was in tears. Like, God used you to change my life. Mm. If, if I had security, don't get touched, Eric Thomas. Don't get near Eric Thomas, the car parked over there. Yeah. I'm not telling people they shouldn't do that. If that's what God told you to do. But even security, I have to check with God to see if he wants me to have security. I got to check with God to see if he wants me to walk through the airport. Yeah. Like, I don't get to make up. I don't get to decide how to do what I want to do when I want to do it. He says, seek ye first. Yeah. So when you fly, seek ye first. When you drive, see when you cut somebody out, yeah. seek ye first. Like I could have, my wife was like, "Yo, are you sure this good? Like, we might need to turn around. Like this is a neighborhood. <laughs> like I'm not used to you going to a neighborhood. I was like, "Yo, boo, this is what God want me to do. We good. Yeah. You know. So by the grace of God, I think anything that glorifies self is of the enemy. Anything that glorifies God is what we should be doing as believers. That's good. That's good. I, I always say that I think the believer is in an advantage. Yes. Uh, if Philippians chapter two is one of my favorite verses. I'm sure you've yes. heard it, right? This is the one I that don't, brings. Don't assume. I, that's yeah. fair. Uh, I don't know. Let's hear. Let's Philippians hear. two, uh, twelve and thirteen. Right. Paul is writing, and he says, um, "Work hard to show the results of your salvation, um, obeying God with deep reverence and fear." And then verse thirteen: "For God is working in you, yeah. giving you the desire." Yeah and the power yeah. to do what pleases yeah. him. So I think the believer is yeah. at an advantage yeah. because God is giving us mm -hmm. the desire mm -hmm. and the power to mm -hmm. obey him and live his ways. And I don't think any of us have any doubts about that until we start comparing ourselves to others. Come on. And comparing what that looks like. Yeah. Bruh, I was just as happy when I was teaching the GED. Mm -hmm. I was just as happy. Why? Because I knew that's where God wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. I was just as happy... You know, when we would go to certain neighborhoods and there was people who were considered outcasts, mm -hmm. whether it was substance abuse or mental illness, like whatever had them, you know, living in an abandoned buildings, living, you know, on the streets. Bro, I was there. I've been on the streets. Yeah. I slept on abandoned buildings. I slept on park benches. Like I lived in a car. Mm -hmm. And so when I walk up to him, I'm not judging. I'm like, yo, daddy just came to tell me, tell you to remind you of who you are. Mm. And his, he's still, his purpose is still... Yeah alive and you yeah. can still do it you're still here on earth it's not too late yeah you know so it, it's not one of those things where you know people say man every time i say something to you about your gift you say praise god it's like it's all like be practical we know it's god but be practical i'm like yeah. no, no 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 i'm being practical yeah. it is god in me and through me yep. that allows me to do videos that catch that yep. make people feel like Yo, E, I felt like you was in my living room. The Holy Spirit was. Mm. <laughs> e, I felt like you was talking to me. The Holy Spirit was talking to you. Yeah, like, yeah. he definitely knows what you're going through. Like, I don't personally know. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here and take credit and act like I sat down and came up with this perfect message. I didn't, but yeah. I did pray that morning. Yeah. And I did say, use me, God. And I did say, despite me and my still sinful ways, use me. Don't let me get in the way of being a blessing to your people. So I know it don't have nothing to do with me. It's the God in me. And that's the advantage that we have. Anytime God does anything for us and through us, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Like he doesn't do average. He doesn't even do great. Like his stuff is off the chart. So of course, as a believer, I would be considered the best to do it. Why? Because yeah. the spirit is doing it through me. Yeah. And all the spirit knows is the best. Yes. You know, so I don't have to, you know, I'm not saying that we don't have to hone our gifts and sure. we don't have to be, great stewards of the gift that God has given us. But let's just be honest. Yeah. It is God that works in us and through us, yeah. you know, to be able to do yeah. the things that we do. Let me bounce one of my favorite Proverbs off of you. Okay. I, uh, Proverbs 12. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Mm. Those who work their land. Mm. And, it, and, and it repeats it. I'm always mm. interested when stories repeat, mm. like the story of who's going to be the greatest mm. repeats in Luke. That repeats. Yeah. So my question to you is, it says those who chase their land mm -hmm. will have abundant food. You're talking about mm -hmm. abundance, right? Mm -hmm. And then those who chase fantasies will have their shield. This, this verb, uh, uh, this proverb, I was listening to Dave Ramsey in the middle of going through a debt-free journey. Me and my wife paid off $45,000 mm -hmm. in debt in 18 months as newlyweds working mm -hmm. like Joe Jobs. Wow. Completely amazing. Wow. And I remember pursuing music at the time. And it was this verse that got me to pivot into full-time music mm -hmm. and taking it serious as a career. What advice would you give for someone to figure out what is their land? Those who work their land will have abundant food. How do you get to yeah. working? Because voc vocations change, yeah. assignments change, yeah. right? Our purpose is in knowing God and ultimately yeah. making him known. Yeah. But how does someone discover what is their land so that they will have abundant food? I think this is the, I think this is the easiest 
question is the easiest um it's the easiest thing we'll ever do as believers like it's it's so simple that we miss it i just want y'all to hear what i said earlier my brand new 2023 cadillac mm. escalade the engine blue you can hear the, the, the knocking in it whatever at no point did I fear. Mm. And this is Cadillac's responsibility, not mine. Mm -hmm. This responsibility does not belong to me. Like, yo, come get y'all a truck. Mm -hmm. Either give me a brand new one or fix it. Mm. But like, I didn't build the engine. Yeah. I'm not responsible for it. The only thing I'm responsible for, to be honest, is driving and enjoying it. Yeah. You're not responsible for figuring out what your land is. He said, ask, yeah. and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. And if that's not enough, knock, mm -hmm. and the door shall be open unto you. He mm -hmm. said, any, any, any man or woman that seeks, yeah. they shall find. Yeah. So the challenge is you're looking at what people who chase fantasies do, and you're using their methodology Come on. In, in, in a religious context, and it don't work. That's good. It don't work like yeah. that. Like, yeah. it's not, yeah. you can't use fantasy stuff like you can't be on social media looking at what they do on social media and try to bring that into the spirit realm yeah, yeah. it's two different the spirit and the flesh are two different realms mm -hmm. so in the spirit realm you have to do what the spirit tells you to do what does it tell you to do ask mm. god where do you want me to go yep, yep. he said okay i want you to go to church i want you to go to detroit center mm -hmm. i want you to go to oakwood mm -hmm. I want you to leave Oakwood now and I want you to go to Michigan State University. Mm -hmm. I want you to start a GED program. Like, I don't want you, to, I don't, but how will I pay my rent? It's not you just paying a rent in any way. If you read in the Bible, it says that this, the lilies of the field, the sparrows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matthew 6. He yeah, said, I'll yeah. take care. If I take care of the lilies of the field, yeah. if I take care of the sparrow, what would I not take care of you? That's right. It's not even your responsibility to take care of you. Mm. That's that's that that is a worldly construct that you gotta get up in the morning and go grind and take care of yourself. Now, I'm not suggesting that you just sit there and do nothing, but he said. Seek and you should knock and it shall ask and you shall. So I just, I'm in San Diego for having me there. I'm like, God, I'm only here for seven days. What you want me to do while I'm here? Yeah. This came, this is what he told me he wanted me to do. Yeah. You know how many people have asked me to do stuff? God was like, nope, you can't do that. 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 Matter of fact, I got my own thing I want to do in LA tomorrow. He's like, nope, you can't do that. Wow. Nope, don't do that. Yeah. Nope, do this. Yeah. And so if you would ask, where's my, what's my gift, God? Yeah. Where do you want me to use my gift? Who do you want me to use my gift for? I promise you, he, the last thing he wants to do is not tell you. He yeah. wants to tell you, but he's a gentleman and he can't force himself on you. So it's like, yo, if you come ask me anything, he that lack, he that lacks wisdom, meaning that he doesn't, he does not know. Yeah. He said, he that lacks wisdom, come and I will give you. And not only give you, I will give you abundant. Like yeah. I'm going to give you without limit. Like yeah. this is what I do. And he even said, if a parent knows how to give good yeah. gifts to their kids and they being evil, yep. how much more does your heavenly father, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I would just say, ask him, he will reveal it, but do me a favor. When he gives you, everybody's been given two talents or five talents mm -hmm. or 10 talents, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody do me a favor though. When he tells you what it is go do it yeah like don't rock don't be a double-minded man is unstable mm -hmm. in all his ways god said this now he's a loving god but there are times where he gets a little irritated he says i would prefer you be hot mm. or cold yep. than to be lukewarm meaning when you figure out what it is i call you to do don't be lukewarm don't sit yeah. on it that's good be hot yeah so i would just say ask seek knock and if you do those three things or one of them should be good but yeah. if you the first or second one don't work you go to the third yeah. one and he'll tell you you owe you summit yeah it's coming up at yeah. the end of this month yeah. you got the new book yeah. you owe you uh before we go to our we're gonna go to our patreon exclusive section but before we go there i want you to talk about the summit why you're doing it i've, I've been keeping up with some of it we got it pulled up here and uh and just just share a little bit about your heart behind the book and behind this i'm sick and tired of people being sold the gift without the gift giver. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, why are we like why 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 are we talking about success 
and leaving out the person that is responsible for our success. Like mm -hmm. why, 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 like why, 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 why is it so difficult to talk about God in the context of success? Yeah. Like is if you if you build a house, the house has at least four supports. Like it's a square for the most part. Mm -hmm. It has four. Like you don't build a house with two. You build a house with all four. It's a square, like mm -hmm. to support it. Why are we selling success and leaving a creator out of it? Mm. Like, yo, what's the purpose? Like, mm -hmm. why are we doing it? So this is why people are struggling because here's a person that gets all this fame, it's all this cash with no character. Mm. Like, here's a person who, you know, chasing fantasies as opposed to it. So for us, UOU is important because it is the journey of some successful people, specifically CJ and myself, you know, you got Carl and LaShawn in there, but it's the journey of individuals who put God first, who sought ye first the kingdom of God and not look at what he's doing yeah. for us. And it's a virtual event, May 29th. Yes. And what I what I noticed about this, you, you guys have done some events that are high ticket events. Yeah. You, so you're giving away some of the secret yeah. sauce in terms of how you've been able to build yeah. and, and scale. This is 97 bucks. Yeah. It's a virtual event. Yeah. Um, and you're and you're hitting the holistic side of all of this. It sounds like from a very Christ-centered biblical point of view. I love it. All the way. And again, 97. Why? Because that's what daddy said. He mm. said, This world right now, first of all. I would have done it for free, but he said, oftentimes when people don't pay anything, they, they don't, don't pay attention. It, yeah. They don't. Yeah. So 97 is like just the lowest you can go ahead. That's the lowest you can pay for something and yep. still hopefully show up mm -hmm. to it. You know, but daddy told me, you know, you gotta somebody, and, and again, you know from the podcast that you're doing, somebody has to include me. Mm. Somebody's got to talk about me. Like, everybody can't act like I don't exist, mm -hmm. you know? And so for us, it was me and C wanted to show us because we wanted to show, yo, why is it that people blow up? Like, you guys were close when you were broke and now you got money and you're not close? Like, mm -hmm. what is this thing about money? And we just wanted to show our values, like as men of God, why we've been able to stay together, why we our families are close, like why we're still at it almost 20 years later. Like what's the secret sauce to real genuine success? And I, I hate to bust your bubble, but we're going to help you. It's not all about money. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach a principle on bowling. I don't know if you're familiar with bowling, mm -hmm. uh, but if you have I'm a, terrible at it, that's okay. all I know. And I can, <laughs> I can tell you why. <laughs> and, and, and most people who are not good bowlers don't understand the construct of the one and three, Yeah, like the one pin and the three pin. Okay. If you can hit the one and the three pin properly, all the other pins will fall. Interesting. But if you take the one pin out, it's automatically a split. Mm. So, oh, I so, see, because so, of the physics of it. So if you take the one pin out, mm -hmm. you've got... And so most people are going after the eight pin and the nine pin mm -hmm. or the six pin in life. They're not hitting the one. You got to mm. hit the one pin. You got to hit the one pin and the three pin. You have an 85% chance of hitting the strike if you hit the one pin and the three pin this is the kind of stuff we're going to teach simultaneously. If you can hit that one and three. And so what is the one and three? The one and three is so powerful because most of us in America are 85, 85 to 90% are right-handed. Mm -hmm. That's why the one and three. If you're left-handed, your probability is the one and the two. But most people aren't successful because they're not going for the one. And the one pin is God. Come on. You put that one pin first. Mm -hmm. And then the two pin could be whatever you, it could be you and God. It could be you, your wife and God. It could be you, your partner in God. But when you put that one and three in its proper place and you knock those two down, those two had the ability to knock everything else down. Yeah. But if you take that one out and you try to hit this, you know how hard it is to hit a spare? Like you, you got pins that are next to each other. Bruh, mm -hmm. Like you got to be dope to hit that one and make that one hit that one and fly over and hit mm -hmm. those two. You know how easy it is if you put the, if you, properly put the one and the three in their right place and so that's what we're going to show you you've been putting money first you've been putting fame first mm -hmm. you've been putting so much first we're interviewing other individuals who are very successful who kept god in the picture yeah. and we're going to show you that for real you don't have to chase a fantasy you have a better chance of being successful chasing god and i don't mean money wise only bro the bible says in joseph had to stop counting the grain because it could not be measured mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. You you can measure like you can go to a trillion. You you don't have a tool to measure. 
and then you have so much that you can't measure it, that's when you start going with that one pen, man. You start dealing with God. Yeah. Oh, it's exponential growth. Yeah. I love I love the simplicity. I love the callback to God, to Jesus, to, to pressing into that. We're going to go to our Patreon exclusive section. I'm going to ask ET two more questions. One, I'm curious his thoughts on deconstruction and people uh, leaving the faith. And then two, yeah. about the biggest misconception that people have about him. So what would you say the biggest misconception people have about you? You seem like, by the way, you seem, hey, if you want to see the extended version of this podcast, completely unedited, consider partnering with us in our online community for as little as $5 a month. In exchange, you get access to these podcasts as we stream them live before anyone else gets to see them. You get access to the replay of our daily after party streams, access to our private Discord server, access to discount codes, and so much more. So help us continue contextualizing the gospel through media, podcasting, and YouTube, and partner with us for as little as $5 a month. I'll see you over there. Peace.